Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, we have three different T-Mobile 5G gateways here and you could get any one of these with the service. And so one of the common questions is which one is the fastest? And so I'm gonna to try to answer that here today. And I'm not gonna do just a one test shot and tell you, oh, that one's the fastest. I'm going to test this in multiple different scenarios here and walk you through it. So before I get into that, I wanna say that these gateways are going to be sold to you as equivalent from T-Mobile. In general, if you ask for them, they're gonna say, hey, these are all the same. And in some regard, that is true. But in the past, I would say in general, I have seen the Nokia one be faster than the Arcadian one. And that's true for a lot of people that are online, either through Facebook forums or Reddit and post. And that seems to be the general consensus. But it's also been probably one of the most buggy ones out there. Uh, the uh, This is a cooling fan to try to help make it more consistent. This one also has that. I've done external antennas on both of these. But the um, other side about this is that these start to cover different bands. So one of the most important thing with your speed for cellular is your band that you're on. That's probably the number one thing. Do you have their latest and greatest uh, 5G signal? You know, in T-Mobile's case, that's 5G Ultra Capacity or 5G UC, which is their N41 band. Or do you get N71 5G? Or do you get just a LTE signal? So that's going to be your, your first thing. And then your second thing is what your signal is like. Your signal to noise ratio, how strong the signal is, all that kind of stuff. All, the, all affects it. That's the other thing I'll say with cellular is it does vary based off your specific location. And um, this is a general rule of thumb, but you might experience something different. So this one here is the Sagemcom and it's new. Not a lot of people have a comparison there of it relative to these other two. So I'm going to test them in really three or four different scenarios here. One is down here in my basement. I get very poor cell signal without any kind of boost or anything. It's typically zero or maybe one bar. So I'm going to test that here and that might be representative of some people's best case scenarios. If you're in a very fringe area and you're trying to get uh, this internet to work for you and it's very poor signal, we'll see if any of these show a difference in capability with a poor signal. Next, I will have my booster turned on. So I have a, a antenna for the booster up on a TV mast above the roof line. And then I have a booster down here in the basement that's actually behind the, um, the camera out of frame. And that would then send signal into here and that can help, um, obviously, my speeds, but it's not going to be as good as an external antenna. So we'll test those three in that scenario as well. Next, I'll go to my first floor. My first floor, I get N71 on T-Mobile. I typically do not get N41, uh, especially with these two. I haven't actually tested um, that one just yet. We're about to go to that. Um, but so that's a good test now for N71 to see if there's any big difference here between these on specific bands, perhaps. And then lastly, I'll go up to a third floor loft, and that's where I get N41 with T-Mobile Home Internet. And therefore, we will compare the N41 band. And we'll also note to see if they connect to different uh, 4G bands. I get um, B2, B66, um, uh, those, and there is B12 out there. I typically never connect to it. But we'll just see if, um, these have any difference in what bands they lock you onto and then what speeds they get. I'm also going to pay attention to things like ping. Let's get right into it. I'm going to go start testing for here for a few hours and then we'll come back and we'll go over what the results are. All right, you can see right here on the panel, it showed me three bars of signal. And this is another thing to note is, you know, to me, the, the bars of signal displayed on the screens here on, on in, any of these devices is really not that helpful. And I'm about to show you why. So I'm in the basement still, and I have no booster turned on. So on my phone, I get barely one bar shown. Now that's actually a Verizon phone, but still. Um, and then here on this gateway, it shows I have three bars of signal. And if I go in here to my cell metrics, I can see that I'm on... B71, and right now the signal to noise isn't showing up, but it was minus four. Looks like it's actually closer to zero at the moment. 
um, so perhaps I actually located it better. But you can see that the signal and the RSRQ, those are not uh, very good. Now, it does show up as three bars. That's uh, barely three bars, I would say. And then there's no 5G shown. So if I go to a speed test here, one, you'll see that it does very slow to actually find a signal and to find the server. And then you can see I'm getting a fraction of a megabit per second. So very, very slow. Looks like about uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 for download. And then we'll go here and see, oh, I got blazing fast, went up to three quarters. And, uh, but you can see the ping there of 81 is the unloaded ping, 200, or 2,578 is the loaded ping. So that's two and a half seconds of lag time. And then you can see for the upload, it's even slower in speed. It's barely even measurable. And my um, ping there loaded it again at about two seconds. So I can tell you and also that jitter is high to it at, at 108 uh, milliseconds. So I can tell you that surfing the web or doing anything will actually be almost impossible with this. I actually had to try the test on um, the speedtest.net app multiple times to actually get it to connect and actually work. So that's on the Arcadian. Let's switch, let's bring over the Sage and Common Nokia and put it in the exact same spot just to be fair and then hook up. And just for reference, I am hooking up to them by Ethernet cable to try to keep that at least consistent between them as well. So let's see what happens on the, um, the next one. All right, so on the Nokia one, it's showing two out of the five bars, so one less bar than the Arcadian. Let's see what that means from a signal standpoint. Let's go in here to the advanced cell metrics. And we can see that I'm on B12 now, so not B71, that the Arcadian one's picking up. It shows a little better signal to noise, but it's showing uh, poor, uh, or, you know, dashed lines there for RSRP. And then um, the RSRQ is um, not good either. Um, looks like the B12 just, so just changed the RSSI to minus 82 now. But uh, so that's where we're saying poor, and of course there's no 5G down here as well. So let's go over to the test here, and let's see what it uh, comes in at. All right, that seemed to actually work better or faster, you know, as far as the time it took for it to load. And then here I'm getting measurably better speeds. <laughs> They're still complete crap, but um, it is faster than the Arcadia one. So this holds to my previous statement that I've seen the Nokia be faster now um, this is nothing to write home about but um, you know looks like it is uh, performing better than um, looks like double the download speed and uh, sadly triple the upload speed or quadruple almost the upload speed and you see the jitter is better too so this is giving me better speeds than the Arcadian one down here for sure let's see what this HMCOM gives us all right, so on the Sagemcom unit, I'm getting three out of five bars, so uh, it's showing the same as the Arcadian. Let's see what the cell metrics show us here. So now we're back on the B71 band. My signal to noise is actually positive. It's still poor. You really want that to be above 20 to be a good number. And then, um, you know, looking at the uh, other metrics here, you know, it's... Um, I think the RSRQ on the Arcadian was actually minus 15, which is actually a little bit better. But um, this is flipping, flopping back and forth. So let's just see what kind of speeds it gives us here. Let's test this guy again. So here's an example that is taking a long time to load. It's just sitting there trying to figure out how it can be connected to the internet. What's interesting to note here is you can see my cell phone actually shows zero bars right now. Uh, I'm saying you know no signal here with Verizon. All right, so it looks like we are getting next to nothing here on speed. Okay, so there you see very, very poor signals. I'm surprised it even worked, but it does. So Sagemcom actually clearly is last place here. The Arcadian was second, and the Nokia was a clear winner of this bunch down here with this very poor signal. But let's really figure out, uh, let's kind of blast through these next ones and I'll show you just the summaries of the speeds for the um, 
you know, booster on, first floor and third floor. All right, so I went through and I did the testing here in the different places I said. So let me just walk through. I'll throw up the results here as I talk through them. Let's start with the basement down here, but then flipping on that high boost booster. And it did actually improve my speeds uh, a fairly good bit and got me back onto a N71 5G. And so the Sagemcom there got about uh, 21 megabits per second download, which is very similar to the Arcadian. But both of those were really edged out by the Nokia there at 27 megabits per second for download. Uh, the thing to note there, though, is that that Nokia did have um, significantly higher ping there, especially unloaded, and then the um, jitter was also a standout. So even though it was faster, it did have uh, some signs there of not as good of performance. Now, they um, also did pick different bands. So the Sagemcom picked a big B66 for the LTE band, where both the Nokia and the Arcadian picked the B2 band. And then that might have played into the upload to be different. So the Sagemcom clearly won the upload speed test at 12 megabits per second compared to 4 to 5 or 6 for the Arcadian and Nokia. And so if you look at some of the other metrics in there as well from the cell metrics, certainly there are different numbers there. Overall, I would say this is actually fairly close to each other. You know, the biggest difference was probably the upload speed there on the Sagemcom one out. But otherwise, you know, you're going to see a lot of fluctuation in your speed um, at times doing back-to-back. -back. I, I did make sure for all of this testing, I used the same server in the speedtest.net. All right, so let's move up to the first floor here. And this is without the booster, right? So the only time I used the booster in any of this testing was the, the previous test there in the basement. So here you can see that my speeds um, in some ways got worse actually than in the basement with the booster, namely on the Sagemcom. The Sagemcom got slightly better uh, download, but the upload fell off. And if you look at what happened, it hopped on the B2 band instead of the B66. So that's probably why that upload fell down. But you can see that, you know, I'm back on N71 for the 5G. And then on the Arcadian one, it did get much faster for its uh, download and about the same for the upload speed. If we go to the Nokia, it also got faster, but not as fast as the Arcadian in this case for download, but it did get better upload. And then the uh, ping and jitter on the Nokia did get fixed or resolved at least um, in this case here. So um, again, here the Arcadian Nokia kind of tied out there and the lagger was the Sagemcom on this N71 setup. Okay, so now going up to the third floor attic, this is where I typically get N41 and sometimes it can be spotty. If you look on the T-Mobile map, I do not get N41 at my location but I have found I've been able to get it, especially with an external antenna up there or outside. Note for this testing, all this stuff was done with stock, so I did not put external antennas hooked up to these. So what's interesting with this is that the Sagemcom hopped on to the N41, and now what I did for the testing is I put these devices in the same location. I did mess with them a little bit with rotation to try to get the best signal, but my goal here was really to put them in the same location, not to say, Okay, the Arcadia needs to go here, the Sagem Crime needs to go here to pick it up. I can see the argument for either way. For this testing, I picked a location and put them there. And so for the Sagem Com, it actually had some tests that went over 100, but then the upload was slower. So I picked this one to show, uh, but basically around 100 megabits per second download and 19 upload is what the Sagem Com was getting with the N41 hooked up. The Arcadian and Nokia, like I said, stuck on the N71, and so their speeds fell down because of that. What's interesting, again, here is that the Nokia picked B66 this time, and you can see its upload was actually the best of the bunch there versus the B2. So um, this is clearly, I get better upload on B66 than I do on B2, so if they were to pick that and lock onto it, uh, that tends to help them out here. So... 
you know, if I look at this, it's kind of a um, mix and match as far as which one is the fastest. But certainly it was very um, encouraging to see that the Sagemcom was the best one at picking B, or sorry, N41 out there. And it was the only one that was able to get it sitting um, still up there in that spot. So as far as which one um, looks like it wins to me, it's a mix between the Sagemcom and the Nokia right now. Uh, certainly, I don't think the, the Arcadian one is the winner in my book, at least from what I have seen out there. All right, so that's all I had time to do for this testing. It was a lot, and it was a lot of work to get these things all hooked up and hook up to each one and get all these metrics. Um, so that was good. I'm happy. Obviously, we need to look at the Sagemcom and external antennas. I have the videos on the Nokia and the Arcadian with external antennas. If you want a waveform kit, you can use my 5% referral link that's down in the video description below. You can also see links to some other stuff in there as well. Now, in the comment section, if you have a question or comment or suggestion for me, feel free to put it in there. And then if this was helpful for you, do give me the free uh, like and subscribe button clicks for you. It helps me and it doesn't hurt you, so I appreciate it if you guys do that. Thank you.